Intel patents AMD's CPU design? An AI can make whatever image you wish. And Windows 11 is getting so secure, you're gonna have to uninstall and reinstall. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So we're gonna start off today talking about how it's been floating out on the internet that Intel has patented AMD's Zen 1 CPU technology. Yes, my friends, a patent that was just granted to Intel for their Ocean Cove CPUs, which I think we're expecting to be the 14th generation, has a one-for-one -one reproduction of AMD Zen 1 in the patent. You can see here that this is what it's saying is the, the CPU, and as, as you can see, you should know this, all right? It's an exact copy of AMD's original Zen core architecture. Even from the most basic execution fetch and decode layers. I couldn't tell you that that's true, but a lot of people out on the internet who are smarter than I have been agreeing that yes, it does look like in a patent, Intel has taken AMD Zen 1 CPUs and put them in the patent that has been granted to them. This is coming out from under Fox 3 who made the initial report about this. However, it's not as tricksy as you might think. Intel does not own the patent for Zen 1 CPUs. AMD did patent their chips. Intel was not granted a patent for that, but it did take a little while to figure out exactly what was going on with this. So Ian Cutris, formerly of Anantech, kind of delved through a whole bunch of this stuff, especially because they quoted his article on the Zen 1 microarchitecture from an article in Anantech and then put that in the patent, which is obviously really weird Weird that Intel would do this at all. They don't typically refer to their competitors. Why would they be doing all of this? But it raises a lot of questions. However, it seems like this part isn't for Ocean Cove. The part that actually references AMD Zen 1 CPUs is just describing how a CPU works. And according to Ian Cutris, he speculates that this was an intern suburb project to describe how a CPU works. Said intern took generic CPU architecture slides from the internet and ended up with AMD not knowing that it wasn't an Intel thing. Thing, and then the actual patent covers some minor thing to do with security and monitoring, and it's 122 pages long. So it seems like it's an overview of processor architecture method and functions, which should typically fill 10 pages, not 122 page patents. That's kind of where the weirdness came from, was that the patent is so poorly done and it's not very clear on what's going on as far as like people actually looking through it. However, it does just seem to be like somebody who shouldn't have quoted AMD in an Intel patent and quoted AMD in an Intel patent and much to do about nothing, but you can check out the patent for yourself linked in the video description as we always do with our sources. So you can check it out for yourself. So in case you hear anybody else saying that, hey, Intel's patent in AMD, that's not quite the case. It's just, it's uh, somebody, somebody did an oopsie. They totally should not have, although there's nothing like practically wrong with it. It's just, it's just weird. Why not make your own stuff in your own patent? If you're gonna show how a CPU works, uh, Intel, you kind of got lots of generations to do that. But AMD's got new generations coming up of their new CPUs and for the first time ever, USB 4, which is gonna include Thunderbolt 4, is actually popping up in drivers for the upcoming Ryzen 6000 series chips that are gonna be going into laptops and likely for the next generation AM5 CPUs that we're expecting. It's only available on Windows 10 64-bit for the USB 4, but it is happening. In case you want Thunderbolt on AMD, just have to wait for this. As I've been messing around with the Steam Deck more and more, I just, I wish they would have given us USB 4. Obviously, the technology is not there because it's not a Zen 5, it's not a Zen 4 CPU. So like, uh, but the next generation, please Valve, have have USB 4 Thunderbolt included in the Steam Deck. It would, it, I mean, it would get, get rid of my video ideas, but it would make the practicality of the device so much better. And is the practicality of crypto getting better? Oh, I don't know. It's time for the crypto stocks. Bitcoin down 4% right now. It's below $44,000. The practicality of people selling it off means that people are making less money. Money, Ethereum down 6.25%. That's quite a steep decline down to 32.21 in Dogecoin, having a huge fall down 12% in the last 24 hours to be at 14.7 cents. So what's gonna fall next is the creativity of mankind. Okay, you think that the jobs that are gonna be safe from the robots is gonna be uh, whatever it needs the genius of human creativity? No, okay, OpenAI says we spit on the idea that humans are necessary 
at all with them releasing Dolly 2, which allows you to produce computer generated images simply from text. Dolly 2 obviously being a rip off the name of Salvador Dolly and then Wally and combining them together to create this, but showing out the production of Dolly 2, you can have a general understanding here. It says a vibrant portrait painting of Salvador Dolly with a robotic half face. You think that's the caption, but no, that's what they told the AI to do. And then this is the picture that the AI came up with. If we're looking at Dolly 2 examples, you get something like teddy bears working on a new AI research on the moon in the 1980s, and it comes up with this. Tell me that's not exactly what that description says. You can you can take a look at the website, openai.com forward slash doll hyphen E hyphen two forward slash, and you can get an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style. You can get teddy bears mixing sparkle chemicals as mad scientists as a 1990 Saturday morning cartoon, a bowl of soup that is a portrait to another dimension as digital art, an astronaut lounging in a tropical resort in space in a vaporwave style as pixel art in a photorealistic style, playing basketball with cats in space as a children's book illustration in a minimalist style and a watercolor style, teddy bears shopping for groceries in the style of Yuki, Yuki I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm so sorry. As a one line drawing in an ancient Egypt, a bowl of soup that looks like a monster knitted out of wool, spray painted on a wall made out of plasticine. As a planet in the universe, as a 1960s poster is mixed media with needlework as digital. The computer got the words and then made these. I'm scared. Kyler, come look at this. That's computer generated from words. I don't know, man. I'm gonna use this for thumbnails from now on. That's a good idea. We should fire Reese. <laughs> and Windows is getting ready to fire itself. Windows 11 needing to be reinstalled for its latest security feature that's going to make things so much better for you. The smart app control feature by default blocks untrusted and uncertified applications from running on your PC. It's baked into the OS, but it's gonna need an uninstall reinstall. It probably will do this behind the scenes, but a reinstall of Windows 11 is, in order, is needed in order to make this happen because it's so secure. Windows 11 is Windows 10, but secure. And 3D printing is just 3D but printed. That's not, it's just printing, but it's read. Oh, whatever. Anchor's coming out with 3D printers, essentially what I'm trying to say at this point. It's, uh, Anchor, you know them for making chargers. We've had them as a sponsor of our new FD Tech, but this is gonna be their first 3D printer, which they're saying is for speed. The Anchor Make M5 is gonna have a base speed of 250 millimeters per second and can go all the way up to 2,500 millimeters per second in case you wanna print real fast. It's currently a Kickstarter, which has raised $2 million roughly of its $50,000 goal, has 44 Four days to go and you can get in line for it. That's just tick. Look at how much money they're raising as I'm just sitting here. Got the Kickstarter price of $5.99 or more. I believe it's it was $4.29 for the super early bird, but that's gone. $4.99 for this one. Now it looks like you're gonna have to spend a minimum of 600 bucks if in case you want it, but it's supposed to be a good one. And what has been really good, at least before the finale has happened, is the TV show on Apple TV Plus Severance. It's got Adam Scott, it's made by Ben Stiller. My God, I was not expecting this show to be this freaking good. I love Ben Stiller as a director. He's making really good stuff. Secret Life of Walter Mitty's fantastic movie, Severance. I'm just talking about this because I personally love this show. My wife and I have been watching it. It's getting weirder and weirder, but it's essentially about the idea of what would happen if your brain could separate your work life from your personal life, and you have no idea what's going on in either of those when you're in those present scenarios. It sounds like a really cool sci-fi concept, and the way they're implementing and exploring it, it's really cool. I'm kind of worried, not because the show is giving me any reason to worry that the finale is going to ruin it, but just because like the finale could ruin it. Like if they don't land it properly, then it could undo the entire series season of greatness. But I'm really excited because it's freaking like it's been great and I, d I trust them with the finale. I'm super excited to watch it. It's got a season two. I'm really hyped about this and you should be hyped about Intel's GPU. At least they want you to be their graphics clock, which they've been quoting on all of their slides. They're saying is different from AMD and Nvidia's game clocks. Okay, the graphics clock that they're quoting is the average Average clock measured in a TDP constrained environment. So essentially meaning that they're actually not letting it go full throttle. And that's what you should average as far as your clock. If you don't have a TDP constrained environment, like if you live in the Arctic or you take the side panel off your case, or you know, you do a whole host of other things to cool it down, you could potentially get quite a bit more frequency out of your GPU. Also in the same interview where that came out, there was a tease picture of an Intel Arc Alchemist GPU with three eight pin power connectors, which the one we're expecting 
everything is only two pins, but you can see right here, this little little picture, right? Three eight pins. That's what we have to go on. That's that's the desperation we got in the tech news to find out what Intel is going to give to you. And I'm not going to give you any more tech news right now. I'll see you here tomorrow for another episode of Hot News, my friends. Cheerios.